It is December 15th and today we're animating constraints and this is the demo application that we are going to build. Very simple, but it's going to illustrate how you can add animations to an auto layout build application, which is pretty useful because otherwise your app seems maybe a little static. So let's bring up Xcode, create a new single view application. Let's call it animating constraints and hit next and create that on the desktop. And we are again starting off by having a look at our storyboard and we're adding two UI views. So I'm just coloring one of them black and the other one we're going to copy and paste. So I'm putting that to the top left corner and making it the size or the height of our view controller and I'm adjusting the size to a width of 188 pixels and then I'm also copying that putting it on the right side and here we go we have a solid black layer on our view controller and now we have to add some constraints to it so let's begin with the left view I'm pressing control on the keyboard dragging it to my super view and then we are selecting the leading space which is the space to the left we are selecting the vertical space to the top layout guide and the vertical spacing to the bottom so with that we're almost done we're doing almost the same thing on the right side so again press control drag it to the super view and this time we're using trailing space to contain a margin so the space to the right vertical space to the top and vertical spacing to the bottom. But if we have a look at our view controller here, we have several red lines, which means that there is something wrong with our auto layout and with the constraints we set. And if you haven't watched the video about auto layout and don't know exactly how to add constraints and so on, then have a look at the playlist in the video description below. You will find all of the UI kit videos in this advent calendar in this playlist and one of them is about setting up constraints and using auto layout. So the problem is that we do not have a width for our views here so we create another constraint by pressing control on the keyboard let's start with the right one and again dragging it to the view and set equal widths. Well that means that our view should have the same width as the view but it only has half of it and we only want half of it. So what we can do is go into the equal widths constraint here by double clicking on it in the size inspector and change the multiplier to 0.5. And with that, we are good to go and we're doing the same thing for our left view. So again, equal widths and then changing the multiplier of this constraint to 0.5. And with that, we have a layout that works on every device so we can have a look at that in the simulator or down here if we change the device if we change the orientation we always have a plain solid black layer but how can we now add animations to our two doors if you'd like and it may be simpler then you think all we need to do is create outlets for our constraints. So what we need to move now is instead of the view itself, we are moving or changing the constants of the constraints. So we have, for example, a view leading constraint to the leading margin of our super view, which is this one. And if you have a look at that, this constant is currently placed at minus 16. So this is its origin and if we want to move this view all we need to do is change this constant to the width of this view so it uh, to the negative width of this view so it moves to the left and we can do the same thing for this right view so what we do here now is first of all connecting this leading constraint to our view controller using the assistant editor and i'm calling this left constraint and we need to do almost the th same thing again so we have the trailing margin here which is the right constraint so let me press control here again and we're setting the right constraint and by having those two outlets we can actually start animating and we're adding a function maybe at the top here let's call it trigger door with no 
parameters. And what we should do first is forcing the layout to update itself, even if we do not animate yet or if we haven't animated yet, because we could have maybe turned the device or anything else could happen. So we use self view and layout if needed, which lays out the subviews immediately. And what we can do now is using simply UI view and animate with duration and an animation block and a completion block. We set the duration maybe to three seconds. The animation is something we add in a second. And we also will need the completion block where I will add success for this parameter here. We could check if the animation was successful or not, but we won't do that here to keep it simple. And what we also need is maybe a variable door open, which is a Boolean and we initialize it with false. And what we can do now is simply using our left constraint, since we're in a closure, we have to use self here, left constraint and change its constant depending on if the door is at the moment open or if it's closed. So we take the door open um, rule here and if it is true, so if the door is open, we set it back to minus 16 and if it is closed at the moment, we set our constant to the negative value of our view. And we do not have the size of our view yet. So we have to create some outlets for our left door and for the right door. So let's quickly do that. We have a left door and we have a right door. So simply creating outlets using the assistant editor. And with that, we have them in our class, in our view controller class. And then we can first of all add a self before our door open property. And then we can use self dot left door and frame and size and width and the negative value of that to change that constant according to our Boolean. And if we use the right constraint and the constant, we can actually do the same thing here. Just make sure that we use the right door here. And if you're wondering why we can use negative 16 and the negative width of the door for both our doors or for both our views, as you can see here, we have negative 16 here as the trailing space. So we start counting here again on the right side. And so the origin is on the right for the trailing constant and the origin is on the left for the leading constant. So we can use the negative value for both. So the most important thing when working with animating constraints is to call the self.view and lay out if needed function in the animation block. This is the most important thing. Otherwise, nothing happens. And to repeat our animation over and over again, we can use our flag door open. So we check that using that property door open right here and we check if it is true so door open then we want to set it to false and if it is false we set it to true and then we can call the trigger door animation again or trigger this function again and of course use self here use self here and then we can add the view did appear function call super view did appear what we have to do here when we override that function. And here is the place where we trigger the door for the first time. So once we launch our application, we immediately start animating and we put that in view to appear because view to load might be a bit early because then the animation would have started before the user can see anything. So let's now give this a try in the simulator and see if our door is indeed opening and closing. So here is the simulator and we're opening and we're closing. And the cool thing about animating constraints and using auto layout is, for example, that we can turn this device around and our animation still works. So no matter how we turn our device, our open and close animation always works because we have used the constraints and auto layout helps us to create a good looking layout all the time. So again, to recap, if you want to use auto layout and animations, then think about animating your constants or your constraints uh, that you have set for auto layout and make sure to call layout if needed 
in your animation block and as we've already said it is very simple to just create the outlets for the constants that you want or the constraints you want to animate by accessing its constant property and by that changing the position of the views that are attached to those constraints. So I hope you find that useful for your own animations. I thank you so much for watching and I'll see you tomorrow.